from somewhere in Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Likey Show. Uh, it's possible, man. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likes. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likes Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. I down our telephone number. You're going to need it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. A listener named Raul sent me a, uh, a link to uh, <laughs> another outrageous column written for Match.com, that has also appeared on MSN.com. I guess they share materials or whatever. And uh, this is written by someone who uh, says, uh, oh, and by the way, th it's amazing who gets to write now for some of these websites. You know, you write for uh, one website, and then th that's your credential writing for another website. It says at the bottom here, Chelsea Kaplan's blog, which is called I'm Somebody's Mother, question mark. Can be found at ChelseaKaplan.com. That's who wrote this piece. Chelsea Kaplan. It's like reading a letter from a listener, only worse. All right, here is the <laughs> here is the column written for uh, Match.com and uh, re, uh, reappearing on MSN.com's dating and personal section sent by Raul, a listener. It's called... How to win over a bad boy. <laughs> Here it is. Are you someone who might as well adopt the mantra, if loving a bad boy is wrong, I don't want to be right? If so, you may benefit from the wit and wisdom of Lauren Francis, celebrity love coach. What is a love coach? Holy cow. You know what? When SUVs go away and $5 cups of coffee are going away, love coaches, they're going away too. I'm telling you right now, as people cut their budgets, I think love coach will be right at the top of the list of things to cut. Sorry, this just isn't working out. I'm trying to tighten my belt here. I can't afford a love coach anymore. Yes, Lauren Francis, celebrity love coach and author of Dating, mating, and manhandling, the ornithological guide to men. She's comparing men to birds. I've saved you the time of looking it up. Francis has spent countless years researching the behavior of hardened bachelors and coaching the love lord. How she uh, <laughs> how has she researched that behavior? Have I done her? Was she taking notes? God damn it. Says here she's discovered that there are secret ways to make many bad boys swoon. Yeah, look like Selma Hayek 10 years ago. <laughs> that would be one way. And also some tried and true methods for breaking your addiction to these heartbreaker types. So if you've got it bad for a bad boy, read on as she shares her wisdom. And then it's in the, favor of, it's in the uh, form of questions and answers. Here you go. Question. You say there are really only two types of men. Do tell. The answer. Most men fall into one of two categories. Marrying men. And hardened bachelors, a.k.a. bad boys. In my private practice as a love coach, uh, gag me, many women in relationship trouble often don't know how to tell the difference between the two. And that's the problem. They fail to see the telltale signs of a man who's really relationship material or a man who's a bad boy. Question. What are the signs of a marrying man? 
Answer? It's not particularly tough to spot this type of guy. He says things like, I'm looking to get married. With the ease of a man saying, my company's looking for a receptionist. He brings up the subject of marriage, family, and commitment on his own unflinchingly and without prodding. When dating, he asks questions like, what was your last relationship like? To understand whether you qualify as a marriage-minded woman. Marrying men like being in relationships, meow. Because in truth, men only marry the women they need. Bad boys just keep burning through women and then replace them with different models, who sometimes are models. <laughs> you hate to see that. Question. So how would you define and describe a bad boy? Answer. He could date in every age range and shag whomever he wants. Because he's charismatic and handsome, he is also a master at making women feel really, really special because he loves them. These men aren't monogamous. They don't have to be. They have so many opportunities to cheat, they figure, what's a bonbon or two when you've been offered the whole darn box? <laughs> Question. How can single women really easily identify a bad boy? Sometimes it's not that easy. Answer, they often make wisecracks about how unhappy all of their married friends are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Bad boys often run in tight little groups comprised of other sexy, equally unavailable males. My boys here in the studio, for example. Their long-term primary relationships are often with each other. <laughs> but they are available to women for sex fun, short-term romance, long-term, non-exclusive sexual arrangements, I love those, or marriages made solely for their convenience, which will likely be riddled with affairs. Beneath it all, though, most bad boys are still traumatized from a twisted relationship deep in their past with a mommy or an ex. That's a female point of view designed to uh, make women feel better about this whole thing. Question, is it ever worth it to date a bad boy? It's mostly who women date. Hello? Answer, bad boys are perfect playmates for women who aren't looking for a serious relationship, like divorced women who don't want to get remarried and are just ready for excitement and fun. In fact, mature women are usually the only suitable partners for bad boys. They're wise enough to understand the value of what he has to offer without making the mistake of falling in love with him. The thing to remember about these guys is that you will never come first. He's totally self-involved, so keep your expectations realistic. Am I totally self-involved? You bet I am. I live with the only person who completely understands me. The person who loves me the most. Me. Says here, be in it for fun and fun only. And try not to expect more because a bad boy will not be able to give it to you. Oh, he'll be able to give it to you, all right. <laughs> Resist the temptation to think you're different, that you can change him. Because you can't, no matter how fantastic you are. It really is not you, it's him. By the way, you can't change anybody. Hello? It's just that the guy who wants to get married is already doing what you want him to do. Question. Can a woman ever win over a bad boy? Answer. If she looks like Jessica Alba before the pregnancy. No, that's not what it says. It says, bad boys all have one thing in common. A need for space. Right. His rigid boundaries ensure that you'll remain too, far too distant for real intimacy to occur. That's right. As soon as he feels he's being emotionally hemmed in, he'll panic. This is one reason why these men prefer dating very young women. They know that most young girls aren't ready for marriage and won't pressure him much. By the way, the uh, pronoun did not agree. It's they earlier in the sentence. <laughs> Make any sense at all? 
If in the extremely rare instance when a bad boy actually lets his guard down long enough to fall in love, know that he'll be virtually tool-free when it comes to working out a real relationship. Oh, he's not tool-free. Just not the tool you were expecting. He's often immature. See, you're immature if you won't sign a contract and let a woman handcuff you to 50 years of hell. You're immature. Immature, petty, prone to jealousy, and then some. By the way, I am not the least bit jealous. Can I tell you something? <laughs> I am not the least bit jealous. I'm hoping you're bagging somebody else because it's one last night you'll be able to bombard me with phone calls and text messages. Please have sex with other people. Please. When you're not, you never leave me alone. By the way, do you know how many women are going to think I'm talking specifically about them? And they're all going to text me now and start blowing up my phone. I heard you talking about me on the radio. Sweetheart, you're one of many minions, please. <laughs> yes, it says here, uh, frankly, in most cases, you'll know that the relationship needs to end. It has to be you and you alone realizing this. It won't come from all of your friends and family members continually reminding you how wrong he is for you. But when you figure it out and get over him, it's the kind of experience that teaches you a lot of good lessons. And a lot of good humping, too. No doubt about it. So there you go. That's the story. Now, all this stuff is total silliness because the bottom line here is there's, there's more than two kinds of guys. But may I just say that guys who are bad boys or whatever you want to call us, we, we just we just don't want to be committed to any one person. And most of us don't lie about it either. We either have money, power, or fame, or we are, you know, GQ models. But the bottom line here is that we, we all have things going for us. We have what you want. And what's great about us is that we're not going to give it to you. But you think, because you've got a vagina, that somehow you'll get it from us just by putting out. So our goal as the so-called bad boys is to get as much vagina from you as possible. And then, after a while, when you realize you're not going to get what you want and we're not going to change, then you threaten to break up with us like this is some kind of a threat. But in reality, it's the completion of a perfect crime. Because just about the time you're ready to dump us, we're fed up with you anyway. We're ready to move on. We've got other action ready to go. So what happens is you give yourselves up to us in the false hope that you'll be able to turn us around. Then, when you can't turn us around, you get angry at us. You're so immature, and you'll never change. You'll never change. Damn straight, I won't. Well, that's it. I'm not going to see you anymore. There's the door. See it. Nobody knows this better than I do. Now, I know there's plenty of other guys like me out there who've got something going for the money, power, fame. Uh, you know, GQ appearance, whatever. But the bottom line is we all know what women never, never seem to understand. And if we're smart enough, we never give it up. We know we've got what women want. And they believe that they have the ability to take what we have to get the keys to the vault, to get the keys to our houses, to get our uh, become additional card holders on our American Express cards or whatever it is. But in the real world, they'll never get any of that stuff. Never, never, never. They'll never get it. By the time they figure that out, we've already gotten what we wanted. It's the perfect crime. Am I wrong? 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. When you're alone, you wake up, you've got a hundred different things you can do in one day, right? When you're in a relationship, you have one thing, what she wants to do. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show at one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. Okay. We're talking about the story about... <laughs> Sent up by a listener named Raul. And I really liked it. 
because uh, it talks about uh, how to tell uh, the marrying kind from the bad boys. God, you got to love that. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. John on the Tom Langus Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you? Do you care? Uh, do, yes, I care very much, Father. I'm doing great, son. Uh, well, the, the first thing I'd like to say is is I have much respect for you, and I listen to your show all the time, and, and so does my my teenage son. And, um, and I hear you talking about you being a bad boy, and, and you refer to yourself as a, as a bad boy. But for me, you saying that is like me comparing myself to you. There is no me comparing myself to you because there is only one of you. And you comparing yourself to a bad boy, somebody on my level, there's no way you don't compare. And you honestly wouldn't last five minutes in my shoes. How so? Well, I don't want to say what I meant to, and it's, you know, but I'm, I'm just telling you, and it's, and it's been like that ever since I've been uh, a young adult. But, um, but like I said, I have much respect for you, Tom, and I listen to you all the time. And my son is, is sitting right here next to me. He'd like to say hello. You might no, 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 no. Tell him to buy a phone, okay, or a radio. But the guy calls in, says I wouldn't last uh, five minutes in his shoes, I say, okay, why not? He doesn't want to tell me what he does or what he's into. I have no idea what he's talking about, but really this is all about getting his son on the air. No. 1-800-5800-TOM. If you want to talk to me, you dial the phone. You talk to Dean. You go through the screening process, and Dean will decide whether you get on the air. We're not here to take calls from your sister or your mother or your wife. It's you we want to talk to. 1-800-5800-866. We're talking about this piece from Match.com called How to Win Over a Bad Boy. Dalton is listening to the online stream in Chicago on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Dad. What's going on? How much, son? It's good to hear from you, man. I, uh, first of all, I just want to say thank you. Thank you so much. You really helped my financial house in order to get my credit repaired and everything. So I really Great. appreciate a uh, little kick in the ass, you know? Good. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I just tuned into the last, you know, 30 seconds of this article, and that's all I had to hear. And, it, you know, there's so many of these damn articles written all the time. Uh, you know, they're trying to change guys. And here's the thing. I don't know what the big deal is because these chicks use the bad boys what they're good for. Don't try to change what's not broken. You know what I mean? Yeah, why would you want to win over a bad boy? He's like, he's a bad boy. I know. I mean, these these ladies, you know, they're they're stressing over something that's uh, that's not need to be stressed over. And the thing is, even if they did change the bad boy, you know, for some act of God, got him to be a nice guy and settle down and get married, they wouldn't find him sexy, like for the reason they did initially. He'd be some ballless pussy. That's right. You know? So I don't I don't get it. And uh, you know, whatever. I'm I'm glad you're doing what you're doing. And if you got ten more seconds, like I need uh, I need a little pep talk because uh, my game's in the toilet right now. What happened? Oh, I don't know. It's just uh, bad karma or something. But uh, you know, I like I like the Cougars. That's kind of my thing lately. And I can't. I just can't. I can't even pick them up. I don't know what the deal is. And you know, I'm a good-looking guy. I make decent money. I'm very well educated. Dress well. The whole bit. And when you go to a joint, do you, uh, you you try to pick these chicks up? Do you talk to them? Uh, you know, I'm I'm kind of a quiet guy. I'm not not real chatty. I'm not uh, so, socially awkward or anything. I'm just not a real chatty guy. You know what I mean? So I don't really know how to meet them. I've never really liked girls my age either. So well, I mean, the way you meet them is you go to places where the older chicks hang out, uh, which is, uh, for example, dance clubs called polyesters. <laughs> there's a chain called polyesters. There, there's a bunch of them around, yeah. and they play music from the seventies and eighties. Yeah, right, right. They hang out at places like that. They hang out at piano bars. Yeah, see, I go there every. Uh, I go to one every, uh, usually every Saturday after uh, after my events, and uh, you know, it's no luck. I don't know what the hell I'm doing wrong, Tom. And when you do, but do you make a real effort to meet them? Because yeah, I, I would recommend you don't. No. No, just, I would recommend just, you ignore them. Just sit there and just sip on my tangere. Like you're waiting for somebody else, like a like a buddy, to show up. Okay. You you have to look like you've got better things to do than talk to them. Because the, women... For a piece of ass. We, yeah, but let me tell you something. Women are attention whores. And cougars are like ten times worse 
Really? They, with them showing off their boob jobs and standing around, they're all looking for attention. Mm. If you give them attention, they will toss you like a Kleenex. What you have to do is not pay attention to them. Okay. You go to a bar. First of all, you have to believe in your head that going to a bar, hanging out with the bartender and having a few drinks would be perfectly okay with you. So that you don't look like you're desperate. Right. Okay. For me... That may be my problem, but keep going. Well, for me, going to a bar and watching the NBA playoffs and having a few drinks and uh, shooting some bull crap with the uh, bartender, that's a perfectly great evening. Okay. So if you are prepared to do that and you look convincing at that, and so you go in there and you do not start conversations with these women. You go in dressed appropriately and, and you are there essentially waiting for a buddy to show up. I'm telling you, women can't stand to be in the presence of men who don't pay attention to them. And then right. they will try to make uh, contact with you. That's completely counter to everything all my little pickup artist friend taught me. But you know what? I trust you over them. You got age. You got uh, you got the status and everything. And they're just 25-year-old punk kids. So I'm, uh, I'm going to take your advice, Dad. Try it out, son. See how it works out. Let me know. I will. Thanks. All right. Thank you. There goes Dalton. Wow. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. We're talking about the piece written for Match dot com called "How to Win Over a Bad Boy," and in this piece, it 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 purports to tell how you can tell the marrying kind from the bad boys. This is Mark on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Dad. What's cracking? How you doing? Somebody's ass. As soon as I get out of here. Damn boy. Hey, uh, Tom. You know that caller that just called about uh, the bad boy. Uh, you know, I think I know what he's talking about. Somebody like you, Tom, you're more like a pimp than a bad boy. How so? Well, for instance, like, for instance, me, I'm a bad boy. I go after the girls, and, uh, like, if somebody's got something to say to me I don't like, I headbutt them because I'm a bad boy. I don't take that kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Whereas you, you're a pimp. You'll, uh, you know, you're more into the girls, and but if anybody messes with you, you know, you're not that on that same level as a bad boy would be. Well, like, you gotta understand, be. I'm using the term the way they used it in this piece. And in this piece, they're not referring to guys who will get into uh, violent confrontations. They're just referring to guys, uh, they're, they're calling them bad boys because, well, they just use women for sex, so they don't want to get married. That's how they're defining a bad boy. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, I'm with that. I'm with you, Dad. Can you take me out with a bong toke? I certainly can. No cough. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Uh, I just think it's the perfect crime. I love how women will try to come to a guy like me who's living alone, uncommitted, not married, whatever, and they will do everything they can including give me whatever I want sexually, in order to get me uh, under the tent, to get me to sign the contract. Then when I don't, they get mad at me. And then to punish me, they tell me they'll never see me again. I'm like, ah, that's exactly what I was hoping for, God damn it! Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. You can have an opinion, I just don't want to know what it is. Why is that? Because I just want you to put your left leg at the 12 and your right leg at the 3. Oh, 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 that is so irritating to hear you say that. It's the Tom Likas Show. Thanks for being part of the program. We appreciate it. Okay. We're talking about a piece that was written for, of all things, Match.com. It appeared on MSN.com and their dating and relationships page, dating and personals, whatever. It's called How to Win Over a Bad Boy. And, uh... 
the bottom line here is, you know, the bad boy is somebody who's going to bang you and clang you, uh, pump you and dump you, use you and lose you. Get used to the idea. He'll be good in the sack because he gets lots of practice. And then he's going to boot you to the curb. So you do a few of these guys, and when you've had enough, then you go marry Poindexter in the IT department. And then when Poindexter's out to work during the day, uh, you uh, take out the power tools and think about the old days with the bad boy. (laughs) Is this complicated? I don't think so. Women thinking that you'd be a good catch or you'd be a good husband, you'd be a good father, I find that stuff insulting. Anytime a woman says that to me, I say, no, 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 you got me wrong. I am not... I am not a good father. I am not husband material, okay? I'm going to use you. I'm going to have sex with you as much as possible. You're going to try to change me. I'm not going to change. You're ultimately going to get frustrated. You're going to threaten to stop seeing me. I'm going to say, well, you do what you have to do. (laughs) It's so simple. And not only that, here's the beauty part. There are women listening to me right now who will try this on me someday thinking they're the one who's going to change me because they've got the magic vagina. Every one of them thinks they've got the magic vagina that's going to make me change. And they're all going to find out the hard way. And not only that, even as I say they're all going to find out the hard way, they're out there right now going, no, no, I can change. I can do it. They all think they can. Then when they don't, they get angry at me. And then they tell everybody what an a-hole I am. That's, I want to be the guy they call the a-hole. I want to be the guy they say, what a jerk, what a creep. I don't want to be the guy they say, he's a daddy bear. He'd make a perfect husband. He's a perfect, you know what? He says he doesn't want to have kids, but I know he'd be a perfect father. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'd be a great father. Oh, wait. I had such a good example myself. <laughs> 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is Anthony on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Anthony. Hey, uh, first off, let me say it's a pleasure to talk to you. I'm sure. <laughs> Second off, let me let me say that the woman writing this should have put pussies and Likas listeners. <laughs> that's, what, that's what we are. And uh, I got a story for you because it's funny you brought this up. It happened to me less than 45 minutes ago. A girl I had met on God's greatest website, Craigslist, um, I've been fooling around with her for the past couple weeks. You know, it's one of those things where I go see her and do my business and then leave, just like you said, a urinal. And then uh, today she thought, you know, she was the one who was going to say, well, I'm not going to have sex with you anymore unless we have a relationship. And I told her, Sorry, not into that. She threw herself in front of the door and started to cry hysterically. (laughs) I said, when I told her that, I'm sorry, I'm not into that. (laughs) Finally, finally, after about an hour of crying, she stood up, went to the bathroom. I left, went home, got on the same website, and now I'm on my way to go meet up with a 35-year-old whose husband is out of town. (laughs) <laughs> I love that. I totally love it. I think that's great. And women just don't get it. Like the woman who wrote this piece. They don't get it. Oh, this isn't the first time either, man. It's it's just an endless cycle. But, hey, I'm having fun in the process, man. I totally love it. Uh, can you take me out African with a little Kurt Cobain? I certainly can. Oh, yeah. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Jared on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Good to talk to you. I know. (laughs) Uh, I just wanted to comment on the on the article, um, and I, I didn't know until about two seconds ago that it was written by a woman. Uh, I just turned my radio on, but I, I wanted to say that it, the article itself is almost an uh, an admission by this woman that women in general are, are pretty irrational, and that you know they'll they want to uh, you know sex as as long as it's not rape is consensual. 
So as long as the woman knows she's having a one night stand with a man, I mean, it, it, it's completely irrational for them to expect someone to call them back. You know, so I just wanted to uh, chime in on that and 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 sort of say how uh, completely it's almost it's almost as if this woman's hurting her cause in writing this article. Um, I just wanted to chime in on that. Well, I mean, again, they, all it's showing. Oh, by the way, women all fantasize about these guys, but for whatever reason, see, I fantasize about the woman who turns into a six pack and a sandwich after you eff her. <laughs> And I, I think women fantasize about the bad boy who f's them hard, and then wants to marry them and have children with. Them. That, that that's the person who doesn't exist. Yeah, I I, I can't understand why it, it's just like anything else. If if you give it to them on the first night, why is there any reason to stick around? And and it it's just completely it, it makes no sense that she would write that, and and it makes women look. Stupid, almost. Uh, totally. Not only so, that, you can tell there's some guy from her past you'd like to be uh, getting boned by right now. <laughs> yes. Um, so if you, uh, that's all I want to say. If you could take me out uh, old school style. Appreciate I it. certainly can. Here you go. It's one 800 top that's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Steve on the Tom Likas show. Hey, Dad, how you doing? Doing okay, sir. Uh, but I just want to comment on this uh, this story, man. I have a, I was actually dating a, a girl, and um, I actually went over to her apartment one night, and you know we fooled around, whatever. She went to the bathroom. I actually saw a book that said like how to get a bad boy. So I was curious. I started looking through it. And it's funny, like, they have a distinction. Cause a lot of people don't know the distinction between a bad boy and a player. Cause I did. I, I thought it was one and the same. But actually, a lot of women are really attracted to, to you know, that, that, you know, that bad boy persona, the charisma, the confidence. But the difference between a player and a bad boy is, like, you always say, honesty. You know what I mean? Because a lot of guys that call your show are idiots, you know, have a girlfriend or have wives, you know, a wife and, you know, mess around with the other girls, you know, going through that whole mess. You know, but if you're honest with them, you tell them, you know what, you know, I, you know, this is the way it is, this is the way I want it, and that's it. People, women respect that. And I don't care what a woman says and says, no, that, or whatever, I don't care what they say. I know that's the truth. That has to be the truth, based on the article that's written, you know, on Match.com, and then there's books out there that how to get a bad boy. You know, I'm sure, you know, there's women out there that love it. They love bad boys. They just don't like the, this, when you lie to them. You know what I mean? Well, I know they like when you lie to them. They don't like knowing that you're lying to them. I mean, for example, yeah. there's not a there's not a woman out there who you think has chunked up a bit who wants you to say that she looks fat in that dress. Women right. love when you lie to them. They love it. They love when you lie to them and say you love them, even when you don't. They love it. Right. But when it comes, well, I think when it comes, you know, to really what you want, why even go through that through that? Mess? Oh, I don't. I don't. I know you don't. Yeah, but I, a lot of your listeners do that, and it just it gets me like, why why would you go through that? No, for me, the beauty part is that I use the truth. I mean, the the bald faced truth. I use it uh, because women can't believe it could possibly be true. Yeah, they can't believe that I could care so little about any one of them. Yeah, and they love it. They eat it up. They eat it right. Up. Like you're telling your listener about that whole bar scene. I've done that before, and you know, just go to shoot the breeze with the bartender. You see women chime in on the conversation, put in their little two cents. All of a sudden, I'm over here having conversation with them, and I'm going home with them. It's like it's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. And, so. and a lot of them think they're going to convert you into somebody who will want to marry them. Exactly. That's that's the problem. See. Yeah. I, no, I it's not the problem. It's the beauty the part because that you don't want to keep them around anyway. So the minute they uh, they bring that up, you've got a perfect exit. Yeah, yeah, that's all. Yeah, that's that's the way it works. That's the way. It, it typically, I'll I'll, I'll, stay in a, I'll date a woman for about like two months before she starts going. Oh well, you know, either we you know become exclusive or else. And it's like, oh, so I was like, bye, well, good knowing you, bye. Simple. They cry, they moan, they, you know, whatever. But it doesn't it doesn't phase me. I don't. That's just the way it works, you know what I mean? <laughs> I do. I'm a Tom Likas listener to the fullest. And and so you use it, and you get laid a lot, and you uh, don't end up getting stuck with any one woman. 
that's that's the name of the game. I, I don't know why guys, you know, don't, don't do that more often. I don't know why guys get married, have kids. And I don't. I just don't understand it. Because they've got no game. It doesn't, it doesn't take that much game. That's the the, the the. It's so ironic. It's not that difficult. It's just if you you do it the right way, you know, you're fine. But whatever. That's why you're doing you know public service and trying to help these guys out. Which you know, I listen to you loyally. So. Uh, yeah, so can you take me out of uh, Kobe style? I certainly can, Steve. Here you go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. This is Raleigh on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Dad. Son, how are you? Oh, I'm good. I'm good. I just wanted to touch back on something you said a few minutes ago about uh, finding it insulting when women call you husband material. Yeah. Uh, I think that's not right. I, if you lower them into that false insecurity, you can get a lot more out of them. Yeah, but you also run the risk they'll put pinholes in your condoms. Oh, no, 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 no. Those are on lockdown, Dad. Lockdown. <laughs> they never get near them. Tell us how you do this. Well... The first thing I do when I meet a girl, I tell them first right off the bat. I'm like, look, I'm looking for I'm looking for marriage, and I tell them this right off the bat because all of a sudden they they let their guard down. Oh, he's looking for a relationship. I tell them I'm looking for marriage, and I tell them if I don't see this ending in marriage, I'm going to end it. It might be sudden. You're not going to expect it, but it's going to be ending because I I respect you, and I don't want to waste both of our time. So right there, I lay out that that uh, pre-planned ex exit strategy. And so when you when you tell them all this, they they think, oh, this is such a good guy, and they're not they're not on the look lookout that you're trying to screw them over. They but don't you run the risk that they're going to refuse to give you what you want because they they really want to get it from bad boys? Oh no 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 no! Because you keep it edgy enough, you you know you you don't answer all their phone calls. You know when they send you a text message, you don't respond. You keep them you keep them on their toes. You keep them wanting it, but yet they're still thinking, oh, this guy really likes me. He respects me. When I'm just getting mine. <laughs> Is that so? That, it's worked for me. And you know what? And Dad, you taught me this. I've been listening to you for five years now. I'm 22 years old. And all through high school, I was that nice guy. I was that, oh, you know, I'm not like, I'm not like these other guys. I'm going to be nice and sweet and they'll really appreciate me. No, nah, that doesn't work. Well, I'm glad to see you're getting somewhere, Raleigh. I thank you for that, Kevin. On the Tom Likas Show, hello. Dad, how are you? Son, I'm doing great. Well, a couple years ago, I'm 33. A couple years ago, I was uh, seeing this 20-year-old casino worker. And uh, we were going out for a I would say going out. She'd come over. I'd make a deposit. She'd leave. It was a nice little situation. Did that for about two months, and she uh, wants to have a relationship. And I told her no. So she left crying and didn't hear from her for a couple weeks. And she called me up and says, you know, that night I left, I was so devastated. I went out to a friend's house, and I had sex, and now I think I'm pregnant. It's all your fault. <laughs> it's all your fault. Yep, she said that I, 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 was, uh, I emotionally abused her by not uh, going into a relationship with her. She said I, she was so distraught that I told her no, that she had to go out and get drunk and have a one-night stand. It was all my fault. I think it's great. I'm laughing my ass off because who's going to end up paying for that in the end? Not you. Not me. No, sir. Not me at all. I said, if you're that mad, why don't you name the kid after me? And, you know, <laughs> you can always remember, you can always remember how, how mad you were and, and the reason you had this kid. I think that's great. But, yeah, it's, uh, I had a series. I had a couple uh, a series of girls like that in a row and Anytime they asked to be serious, I said, oh, I got, I got stuff to do. you got to go. And that was it. I think it's fantastic. Thank you so much for that, Kevin. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. The Tom Likas Show.